family. Vlogmas is over. It's day 26. It's day 26. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it, do it, do it, do it. Stay tuned. <laughs> All right, family, welcome back to I Love Me, Me, Me. So, we have officially made it past Christmas. So, welcome back today. Uh, so, the question of the day is, how can I make sure that my relationship thrives? I'm going to give you guys 15 tips so you know I can get long-winded. So, let's jump in. All right, so one of the first things that you can do is to speak life into your partner and into your relationship in order to make sure that your relationship thrives. All right, number two, before you have a conversation with your spouse or an argument, some may call it, before you have that with your spouse, visualize that conversation going well. If you visualize it going well and stick to the positive thoughts, more than likely, that conversation or argument is going to go well. The third thing is behave the way that you would want your partner to behave with you. So now, if you start to yelling, guess what? Your partner may start yelling back at you. If you start to cursing, guess what? Your partner may start to cursing at you. If you start to act in a diggity dog on fool, guess what? Your partner may start acting like a fool with you. So if you don't want that, then start being nice, start being respectful, start letting your partner speak and you actually listen to them. This is the behavior that you want your partner to actually um, emulate or mirror. Number four, ladies and gentlemen, is to focus on the positive things that your partner is bringing to the table. Number five is to breathe life into your relationship, literally life into your relationship breathe life into your relationship speak those kind words do all of the kind stuff you'll see a difference absolutely we'll see a difference number six you know i say this all the time but it has to be put here make your relationship a priority it will thrive make it a priority number seven we have a tendency to do this which is to avoid the uncomfortable conversations don't avoid those uncomfortable conversations when you are feeling nervous about having a conversation guess what you need to do you need to have that conversation when you are feeling like something oh might not go right or whatever have the conversation because those nerves are going to do nothing but continuously build up and build up and guess what usually the things that we're nervous about or fearful fearful of don't usually come true we're usually putting all of that stress and anxiety on ourselves. So anytime you need to have an uncomfortable conversation, you can still be respectful. You know, I, I preach that too. But have the conversation. Let your voice be heard. Number eight, take away the option that the relationship will not work. I just mentioned this in another video, I think two days ago. Take away that option that your relationship won't work. It will thrive. That actually brings me into number nine, which is to commit to your relationship as if it is already working. Commit to it. It's working. It's thriving. It's doing what it do. This is the best relationship that you had ever been in. Number 10, you want to make sure that you invest in your partner. Just like you're investing in the relationship as a whole, invest in your partner. They can do it. And they can do it with you behind them saying, yes, you can do it. Giving them that little push to let them know, you can do it. You got this. This is your world. This is our world. This is us. We against the world. Number 11, I want you to visualize you and your partner having a great life together. I said this before, what you, what you, what you focus on is what actually comes true. What you think about all day is what actually comes true. So if you think about you're going to have a great relationship, you will have a great relationship. You can visualize and see yourself having a great relationship a year from now, two years from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now. Visualize that. Number 12, expand the vision that you want for your relationship. Don't let it stay in that little box that is in. Don't let it stay in the current state that is in. It should be growing. 
Your relationship should be growing. It should be thriving. You should not be in the same state that you were in a year ago. Your relationship should be better, not worse. Expand that for your relationship that you're currently in. Expand that. 13, we all can learn a lesson for number 13, which is to hold your spouse accountable for the things that they say that they're going to do. And not only the things that they said that they're going to do, but the things that they actually said that they're going to improve on, especially within you guys' relationship. Hold your partner accountable for those things. Because if you don't, they won't do them. And it's not that they're intentionally not doing them. They won't do them because it's not a big deal. If they don't hold themselves accountable, or excuse me, if you don't hold them accountable to their word, it's not a big deal if you don't, but you want them to know it is a big deal. And it's not because they're helping you. He or she is helping y'all thrive. It's helping y'all relationship thrive. Hold them accountable. Call them on some of them things. You said you weren't going to curse no more. You said you weren't going to do this. Let's tighten that up. Number 14. We want to get away from the I'm right game that we always in in our relationships. I'm right. I'm right. I'm right. You wrong. See, I told you so. Yeah. Oh yeah. You did that. Didn't work out. You ain't got to be right all the time. You don't. Even if you are right. I can respect you a lot better if you don't tell me that you're right in the moment that you are right. Trust me. I remember that you said I'm right. Or trust me, I remember that you said this was going to work out and it didn't or whatever it is. I remember you ain't got to remind me right then in that moment. I ain't going to be trying to hear nothing that you're talking about. And neither is your partner. You ain't got to be right all the time, even if you are. Like I said before, you want to be right or you want to be in a relationship. In a relationship, you have to be selfless. Get rid of all of the pride. Get rid of all the ego. I remember, I actually remember, um, I think it was Les Brown, actually, because I, I actually like listening to Les Brown. But anyway, I think it was him that says, eagle stands for edging God out. So you edging God out or what? Brings me to point number 15. Point number 15 is to pray a lot together. Bring God back into your relationship. And you will notice a big difference in the way your relationship is. Yes, you will. Pray together. That would actually help your relationship to thrive. It absolutely will. I have a bonus, actually. I just thought about this, and I, I can't believe it's not on my list. But number 16 and or the bonus is say I'm sorry and say it often. Say it like you mean it, and then do not bring that stuff back up. When you say I'm sorry, mean it. When you say, I'm sorry, don't do that thing again. I hope that these 15 things have helped you out, including the bonus tip. Uh, I have to say that I am so appreciative to each and every one of you. I will see you guys tomorrow.